That was a cool video. Did everybody get all that? Okay, good. <laughs> all right, so next Friday, everybody say next Friday. Next Friday. Say no youth. no youth. We don't have youth next Friday because of marriage retreat. Anybody watching kids or helping? Anybody getting watched? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All right, all right. Everybody say tonight. tonight. After service, we'll have an afterburner, and that will go until 11 o'clock. So make sure your rides know by 11. Got to be out the door. Um, and you'll need $5 for that. If you don't have $5 in cash, there is QR codes on each side. You can scan those and pay online. And that'll be it. All right. Offering. Praise the Lord, everybody. Has God ever done anything for you? Amen. Anything at all? So there's a story that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, there's a, a uh, apostolic woman who was once Hindi. Some of you might know her sister, Vani Marshall. Her mother, um, her foot was hurting, or something was wrong with it. I don't know, remember the full story, and she knew that Sister Vonnie Marshall had something that she didn't have. And so she called her, and she prayed for her mother over the phone, and the Lord healed her foot. And so the Hindi religion is a religion of false gods, and they worship false gods, obviously. And so they bring gifts to their gods. And when the Lord healed her foot she found the first apostolic church she could find and she brought flowers to Jesus because that's what she knew. She knew this is a, a God and I know I'm supposed to give. He's done something for me and now I want to give out of the goodness of her heart. She had, it was out of complete innocence. You know, we, you don't really see people bringing flowers to the church and giving to Jesus, but she did it because God did something for her. And so if God has ever done anything for you at all, anything from a, uh, I don't know, a pimple that went away to a, praise <laughs> yeah, praise Jesus, <laughs> a anything at all, anything, if God has ever done anything for you, it is our honor, not obligation, it's our honor to be able to get, get to give. And so everybody stand. And ushers come. And if you don't have anything, turn to your neighbor and say, can I please have a dollar? And if you don't have a dollar, I have three that I want to share. So if you don't have a dollar, I want to share so you can give. Anybody? Anybody don't have any? Anybody does not? What's the English for that? Does anyone not have a dollar? Everybody has something to give? You don't? Okay, here you go. Give it to Jesus. Okay, all right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to give to you tonight. God, I pray that your blessing would be upon the people of God, that you would bless the giving that we have here today. Uh, according to you, <laughs> and to everything that you're going to do tonight. For your kingdom, for your glory. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Let me hear your best praise.
That's your best? That's your best? I didn't hear any guys. We got to lead. We got to worship. Come on, praise. Give me your best praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus is worthy. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more thing before we get service going. We are going to take up a uh, payment for pizzas now and food and whatever now uh, so that we have a count and everything's good. So if you have cash and you uh, you can see Brother brother Craig, can you raise your hand for, we might need lights for this. Brother Craig, can you raise your hand and Sister Callan, Sister Callan's right here If and do it orderly and obey. But yeah, just pay. And if you don't, there's the QR codes on both sides. Men can scan over here if you're eating. This is just if you're eating. Okay? And... Yep. So just take a few minutes to do that. Praise the Lord. If you've already paid, please find your way back to your seats so we know who's paid, how many people are left. If you're having if you're having any trouble with the online payment, you just scan it, wait a few seconds, and then it'll automatically come up how to fill out your info. You just got to wait about four seconds. Has everybody that is eating tonight paid? All right. Has anybody that's eating tonight not paid yet? You haven't paid yet? Okay. That's at Okay. Well, God bless y'all. Let's get ready for a mighty move of God tonight. So everybody, no more talking. Let's get in this and let's have a great night tonight. Amen.
demonstration of your power. We want more than stories. We're declaring and believing for it now. We'll prepare the atmosphere so you can be welcome here.
anything can happen the moment that you walk in anything can happen anything can happen anything can happen the moment that you walk in to the room Jesus, how many believe that anything can happen tonight whenever God walks in, whenever he's in, he's already here, he's already here, amen, right now, let us stand, let's get ready to receive the word, brother Joel is going to come speak the fiery five, but let's keep that same spirit of expectation for what God's going to do tonight, amen, amen, let's worship him together right now, amen, amen, how many believe that anything can happen here tonight, amen, amen. praise God, and praise God. Amen. I want to thank uh, Bishop and Pastor, amen, and the leadership of this church. I want to thank Brother Tony and Sister Amy. Praise God for loving this group, amen, and trusting us and helping us grow and reach our potential, amen. And we have the mountain movers of Yukon here tonight, amen, and we give honor to them and we give honor to their youth pastor, Brother Jonathan, amen, and I believe God's going to continue to do a great work in Yukon, amen, in y'all's youth and in y'all's church, amen. Amen. Tonight, I have two scriptures here tonight, and I want y'all to open y'all's Bibles to uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10, and when you have it, shout amen. Amen. Praise God. And so scripture says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure. How many of you take pleasure when you are in trouble? Amen. When you are in trying times, nobody I, I go through trying times, and I really don't like taking pleasure. But it says, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Some people think, well, when I am at my best, that's when I'm at my strongest. But the scripture says, when I am weak, I am strong. Amen. And so the second scripture, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, amen. So when you have it, shout amen. 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 For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day for our light affliction, amen, which is but for a moment. I came to tell somebody, your season right now, what you're going through is just for a moment, and it's a light affliction. Amen. Come on, somebody. And uh, which is uh, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated here tonight. Amen. Throughout the Bible, we see people in the Bible, men of God, women of God, people who go through trying times. We have Joseph, who his siblings hated him. How many of you hate your sis siblings here tonight? <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Nobody. Now we know. We don't have to pray for you. Amen. But we see Peter denied Christ, the great Peter preached in Pente the day of Pentecost. We see Daniel, a man of God who was thrown in into a lion's den. Amen. We see King David, that giant slayer, and he killed a man and he slept with that man's women, woman. And so we see throughout the Bible that people go through trying times. And I know we are not perfect. Amen. But God is perfect and he can do all things. Amen. And so I like a story in the Bible, Paul and Silas. Many of you maybe have heard about them, but I love this story because it just, it, I, it just touches my heart. And, and I love it because what interests me is that these two men were men of God. 
used mightily. Amen. And the, and the Bible says that people thought otherwise. They thought they were bad. They were teaching customs that were not lawful. And so a multitude came and arrested them. And, and they said, you know what? We, we command you to beat these two people. Now imagine you being in this situation, being, being, being brought up by a multitude and being told, we want these two people to be beaten. Amen. That wouldn't be very good. Amen. And so... Um, and so they ripped their clothes off, they stripped them, and they beat them with rods. I could imagine the pain that they were going through, everything they felt through their body may be bloody. And then the scripture says that they took them into, um, they took them into a prison, the most inner part of that prison. It might have been cold and dark, amen, and they shackled them, amen. But I believe that even in that midnight, God was in that mist, amen. And in that prison, you guys know what they did. They prayed. Most of y'all might be praying. Y'all say, well, Brother Joe, you know, I've been praying for many years and, it, and nothing ever happens. But I came to tell you tonight, when you pray and when you worship, the chains and the shackles became, become to loosen up. Amen. And you know what? Prayer works. And I love prayer because, look, not only did it free them, but it freed every other person that was in that cell. Every gate was open. Amen. So when you pray, it not only does it help you, but it helps other people. Come on. I wish I had somebody here tonight that would lift their voice and you would say, I'm not going to listen to the lies of the enemy, but I'm going to have faith in God. Luke 10 and 19, behold, I give unto you power to thread up on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Romans 8, 31 through 39, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Come on it doesn't matter what you're going through right now at the end you're gonna come out stronger you're gonna come out better come on somebody you ought to get glory to God because he's about to fix your situation he's gonna do something in your life you're still used you're a man of God you're a woman of God come on somebody you ought to give glory to God hallelujah amen 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 who shall separate us from the love of God of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Come on, I wish I had somebody that was more than a conqueror. Amen. Here tonight, you are more than a conqueror. You're not just going to make it. You're going to conquer it and you're going to overcome it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Through him that loved us, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor, nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ our Lord come on you might feel like you you might been lied to the devil's tried to lie to you but come on you ought to rise up and you ought to shout and you ought to pray because your victory is in this house anything can happen right now I wish somebody that would come to the front and you ought to give glory you might have been beaten up you ought, you might have been shackled but you God you are gonna be free in Jesus name come on you ought to give glory to God you ought to glorify him you you ought to shout and scream whatever you got to do but you are going to be set free here tonight uh, come on somebody come on loosen up shake those chains off come on hallelujah thank you Jesus yeah. hallelujah hallelujah why don't we lift our hands here tonight why don't we start praying in the supernatural God, we pray that you would come in this house. God, take your liberty. God, let every chain be broken. God, let everything that's been hurting these young people be shooken off of them. Devil, get your hands off of them. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. The gates of hell shall not prevail. Come on, get loose in the Holy Ghost. God's in this house. Jesus is in this house. 
Jesus is in this place. Woo! Come on. Don't let it stop. Keep going. Keep pressing. Keep pushing in Jesus' name.
to him right now one last time. Just give him all the worship you got. Everything he's worthy of right now, just pour it out. It's all about you, Jesus. interrupt the flow of the Holy Ghost, and I don't think we are, but right now I think if we could just make our way back to our seats and get ready to receive the word, I think it's time we keep our hearts open to receive the man of God tonight, loose him, get the people's anointing on him, God has anointed, and let's just receive tonight, okay? Let's keep our hearts open, no distractions, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. We turn some lights on for me. Hallelujah. Turn your neighbor and say, don't be distracted. Tell, the other, tell your other neighbor, don't be confused. Tell your other neighbor, the door is wide open. Tell somebody else, we in the middle of revival. We in the middle of revival, Turtle. Is your name Turtle? My, my kid said your name is Turtle. I said, why? He said, because she's slow, bro. She's like, I'm not getting ready yet. Is that it? You move around slow at home or something? You know, okay. He said, it takes you forever to get ready. Who said Brother Tony? Yeah. Oh, that's Turtle. Okay. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Praise God. Tell your other neighbor, we're in the middle of revival. In fact, you ought to get up and go shake somebody's hand you don't know and tell them you're glad to see them here in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Now, if you're new here, you're about to get your handshake like 50 times. I know you, but I'm glad you're here. Good to be here. Yes, sir. Praise God, bro. That's my new fave all of a sudden. You text me. I was like, it's like it's the Holy Ghost. I'm serious, bro. I just had that. Praise God. Woo. Does it, uh, do you feel good? Does it feel good in here right now? If you're kind of new here, maybe, you're, maybe you came with the Yukon Church. Praise God. We're glad you're here. Just re let your walls down. Just relax. We're not, no one's here for a show. You, you know what I'm saying? We're not judging you. You're not judging us. We're not here to try to impress anybody. How come he's sitting down there? You're supposed to be sitting up there, young man. Praise God. We're not calling anybody out but your youth pastor. We're calling him out. But <laughs> just let your walls down right now, okay? Is that all right? Man, I forgot her name already. Camry, that's right. It's a car. It's a car. Her name's a car. Just let, tell your neighbor, just let your walls down. Tell your neighbor, it's okay. This is a safe place. Everybody know what I'm saying? This is a safe place. When you come here, you should feel peace. You should feel liberty. Um, you should feel anointing. You should feel love. You should feel needed. You should feel apart. And if you don't, maybe the enemy's messing with you or someone else in this room. And if it's someone else in the room, you got to let me know. Because we go and put a millstone around their neck and let them go swimming with the fishies. You know what I'm talking about? That's how we do it around here. You know what I'm talking about? Forget about it. I got my, I got my, I got my hat over there. <laughs> See, the, the people, the people that, who said that right now? That's what I'm talking about. The people we've done that to, you don't know because they're not here. <laughs> they swim with the fishies. 
Tell your neighbor, just relax. Just relax, bro. There's, you don't have to be nobody special or nothing, all right? Just be you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look around. Tell somebody we're in the middle of revival. We're in the middle of revival. Hallelujah. If you can't see it, your eyes are being blocked. Your eyes are being blinded. You're focusing on the wrong things. Get your eyes on Jesus and say, God, thank you for bringing the revival. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. Thank you that I get to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. When I lay my hand, somebody's going to feel your presence for the first time in their life. They're going to cry. They're going to pray through. They're going to get the Holy Ghost. They're going to get transformed and changed. Thank you, God, for letting me. Someone say, me. Be a part of that. Woo, you get to be a part of that. And the devil hates it. Tell your neighbor, the devil hates it. Is this center for you, Brother Josh? Is this all right, this pulpit? All right, cool, thank you. Praise God. I, um, I think next week, or is it the red one that's, that's, that's live, please? Come back there. All right, I think next week um, our good friends, the uh, Padgies, are coming home. Is that right? Woo. Is everybody... Everybody wave hi to him. Everybody, that camera back there. Hey. We got big Padgy, sister Padgy, chlorine Padgy, and uh, Dinglehopper, right? Is that it? Dinglehopper? Is that the last one? Oh, I almost said that right. Praise God. We got nicknames around here. Because when we, ha when we put a millstone around your neck, we can't, there can't be evidence of who it was. Who did that to them? It was Dinglehopper and chlorine. No, there's no evidence. Chlorine. Chloe. See, now people know. Can you edit that? Can you cut that out? Smile. Can somebody smile right now? I'm working on it real hard. So you think, what's this ding dong doing? I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for 10 years. Just smile. Smile at your neighbor. Go ahead. Show them your teeth. Woo. We're getting some wide <laughs> stop it, Sister Heidi. Woo. Lodi in the house. Praise God. Hallelujah. My wife informed me today before I came to church that I'm not allowed to preach about poo-poo or diapers. So that one's delete my message, honey. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. What, babe? Put you on blast. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> my wife didn't tell me that. It was someone else. <laughs> Did you say big mama? <laughs> Big Mama's over there. Big Mama. Big Mama's in the house. Praise God. Bear, Mama Bear, right? That's, that's my wife's name, Mama Bear. What is it? Barbie? Marmon, okay. We're going to go with that one, not the other one. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Praise God. I think I said that right. Did I say that right? Ecclesiastes? Ecclesi Ecclesi Anybody know what Ecclesiastes means? I can't say it. Anybody know what it means? What's it mean? Who said it over here? Who said it? The preacher. It means the preacher. Praise God. I thought it was some sad thing. No, it just means preacher. Hallelujah. You can stand up. We're reading the Word. That's what we do. Praise God. It's an honor of the Word of God because we reverence and believe in the Word of God. Praise God. So first verse says, the words of the preacher, the son of David. Someone say son. King in Jerusalem. Someone say king. Hallelujah. Vanity of vanities. Tell your neighbor, vanity. Say it, the preacher. Vanities of vanities. Dude said it twice. Must be important, right? And then he says, all is vanity. Tell your other neighbor, all. What profit hath a man of all his labor? which he taketh under the sun. Y'all can sit down real quick. That word vanity, it means to be empty. It means unsatisfied. It means meanless. Tell your neighbor, meanless. Young people, there is a lot of things chasing after your attention in this world. There's a lot of stuff. I, I, I looked up an app the other day. It was it was a because uh, we're putting together a social media packet to warn your parents about what to allow, what not to allow. And I looked up one thing about uh, date people in Oklahoma City, and there must have been 30 apps where you can connect with somebody you don't know in Oklahoma City and have a second and give them your address, have them come over to your house. I was like, Good Lord, this is bad. This is awful. if your phone ain't locked, it needs to be locked. You don't know who's going to knock on your door. Hey, are your parents home? I'm 13. I want to come over. And then who shows up? Some guy with a beard. Come on now. Look, we, we need to close the door to that nonsense. 
Amen. And if you got an app like that in, in, in the house, you need to pull out your phone and delete it right now because that's nonsense. I don't care if it's apostolic dating. You ain't old enough to date. Oh, let, me, let me get back on my thing. There's a lot of things in the world trying to get your attention, but say it's all vanity. It's all vanity. You can aim to have the coolest shoes, but it's meaningless. Man, I saved up $150. Is that what they are now, or are they more expensive than that? Oh, I see these guys over there. They're laughing. How much are they? They're 200 now. So, bro, mine are like 20 bucks. Praise God. I'm cheapo depot. I'm not, I'm not cool no more. I just lost my cool stat. You can get, I told myself I wasn't coming off the platform. Here I am coming off the platform. You can have those 200, $200 shoes. So we said $200 shoes and it's empty. It's meaningless. You can, you can determine to know all the words to the, the newest worldly song, and it's going to leave you empty when you're done. We don't know that. That's not completely true, is it? There's going to be something in there, but it ain't going to be the Holy Ghost. Spirit's going to attach yourself to it. Things are trying to get your attention, but you're never, they're never going to find what they want looking out in the world. Zero. I got one clap, but I got three rights. You're never going to find what you're looking for out in the world. Take it from me. Been there, done that, never going back. Hello, if you've tasted and seen, you know it's all dirt and trash. Ain't nothing sweet about it. It lasts for a few minutes and then poof. It's vanity. Ooh, sit down. It's vanity. It's vanity. It's a waste of your time. You'll never find what you're looking for out there. In fact, if you drop down to verse 7, I think it's verse 7. Praise God, Lord, help me. Verse 7 says, all the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. You ain't going to find what you want out there. It ain't out there. It's going to leave you empty. In fact, it says that the water evaporates out of that sea and goes right back to the mountain, and it just keeps going round and round and round, and you find yourself in a never-ending circle of insanity, realizing, man, I'm wasting my time. It's time to go back to the house of the Lord. There's no other place to be. Car. <laughs> is it Camry? Is that what it is? All right, cool. <laughs> you're not a car, but your name is a car. So, <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It'll always leave you empty. Tell your neighbor it's going to leave you empty. But when a person knows their purpose. Hello. Now we're getting somewhere anyway. When a person knows their purpose. When a person knows their calling. Then they find fulfillment in their life. When a person's walking in their calling, they start to walk in everything they need. It, it brings goodness into your life. It brings strength into your life. It brings joy into your life. It gives you a reason to wake up in the morning. It puts this hunger in you that says, I got to keep moving forward. I got to keep moving forward. I got to keep pulling forward to the glory of God in my life because he's called me to something. But the devil does the opposite. The devil's pulling you back. Hey, remember your past? Remember yesterday? Remember last month? Remember all those things you used to do? Remember how good it used to be back there when you was up in the hood? Remember all the girls that, that, that were hollering at you and all their numbers? He's trying to pull you backwards at all times. But Jesus is always saying, no, no, no. Tomorrow, next week, next year, you're having revival tomorrow night. You're going to see people get the Holy Ghost next service that's, uh, that's in the YC. You're going to have things in your future that are way better than the past. God lives in the future. He calls things that aren't as if they were. He don't talk about the past. It's over. He says the best is yet to come. Better things are in your future. Don't want what it used to be. Want something better than that. My goodness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God has a purpose and a calling for everyone in this room. God has a purpose for you. He's got a calling for everyone. Say me. I got, I got 70%. We're, we're, we're failing quick. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Say you say me. He's got a purpose for me. I'm individualizing it tonight. And that purpose will cause you to pray. Lack of prayer probably means lack of purpose. 
No reason to pray. I feel like I got everything I I need. Everything's going okay. Now, when you got a purpose, man, I got to get on my knees because there's some young person that's going to come to the Spanish service that needs a revelation of who you are, Jesus. And then I want them to come on a Friday night and get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I want their parents to overcome. I want their brothers and sisters to overcome. I want Sunday school to be full. Purpose drives you to intercede. My goodness. Purpose causes you to prepare and to study and to stay up late thinking about it and get up early with it, the first thought on your mind, because you got a purpose in life. It causes you to submit even when you don't want to submit. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes submission is hard, but it's the best thing you can do in life, let me tell you. Woo! Because the more, man, I don't know where I'm going right now, but the more you get under, the more you got. Oh devil wanted to get out hallelujah hallelujah you know people without a person a purpose people without a purpose they find themselves depressed and not dressed yeah you see them walking down the street what do they got on pajama pants no car pajama pants if someone walks down the street wearing pajama pants in this place i'm so sorry right now Depression leaves you without getting dressed in the morning because you got no purpose. What's the point of getting out of bed? One o'clock in the afternoon, well, I guess I got to get up. I got to eat a Pop-Tart. I got to walk down to the marijuana store with my pajama pants. I can't. Dude, you are 24 wearing SpongeBob pants, bro. (laughs) He said, right. There's no purpose in their life. They're not bad people. They just haven't come in, got the Holy Ghost, got a call, and got a direction for their life. God's got a call for them, too. He wants to plug them in. He wants to deliver them. He wants to transform them. He wants to change them. And if he can do that to them, he can do it to you. Hallelujah. Man, those... That kind of situation, they they have no calendar. They have no agenda. They have no schedule. They have no to-do list. They have nothing to look forward to. I've been there. I know what I'm preaching about. We woke up like, oh, gee, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to try to take over the neighborhood. Oh, that's a good idea. Roll up some weed. Pointless. Vanity amounted to nothing, brother. Well, that's a lie. It did amount to something. Four felonies of time in prison. Vanity. Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. There's nothing in that world. If they try to make it look cool, it ain't cool. That rapper that's rapping, talking about how rich he is and all the stuff he did, dude ain't done nothing. Dude ain't never done nothing. Those dudes get shot by the people that do do something. It's fake. It's all a, 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 a big mirage, a lie to suck you in. Oh, it's got no purpose. But when a man or God gets, a man or a woman of God gets filled with a Holy Ghost, it, it puts a person, a purpose in them and starts to drive them forward. My God. My God. And God wants to give you a purpose tonight. Tell your neighbor, God wants to give you a purpose tonight. Hallelujah. And someone just thought, God, hasn't, God doesn't have a purpose for me. So I just hit him. Oh, God doesn't have a purpose. Purpose. I, I have no purpose. That, is, that thinking right there will keep you from getting a purpose from God. You got to shut that kind of thinking down. You've got to understand the devil just spoke to me, and I am rejecting that thought. I refuse that thought. I will not speak that thought. I will no longer think that thought because God has a purpose for me. Hallelujah. So uh, uh, go back to verse one. The first thing you got to do is you got to know who you are. Tell your neighbor, you got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. I want you to see in this first verse that he said, I'm the preacher. I'm the son. I'm the king. Solomon knew who he was. He said, everything's vanity, but I know who I am. I got a purpose. I got a call. When I speak, things happen because I'm a a king. I'm a son of David. (laughs) I'm called. I got a purpose. I got a direction in my life. The first thing you got to do is recognize who you are. 
You got, man, it's quiet in here now. You got to recognize who you are. There has, you can't have no doubt. You can't have no question. You can't have no wonder on the fact. You've got to know that I am a child of God, and I got a purpose in the house of God. There's a place for me in heaven. Woo. My goodness, you're a son of God. You're a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. That means you're a possession desired of God. You're sitting down right now. You, as an individual, where you're at right now is a particular person, a peculiar person, which is a possession that God desires. He said, I'll sell my life just to buy you. The God of all the universe, the creator of everything. He could make anything he wants, yet he said, I want this man right here. I'll die for this one right here. And we lack value in our life. We search for value in the iPhone. We search for value on Facebook. How many likes do I have? Who cares how many you have? Jesus said, I love you, and that's all you need. You're a valued person. Oh, God. You got to know who you are. Tell your neighbor, you got to know who you are. You're bought. You're owned. You're possessed. You're wanted by God, the creator of everything. He wants you with him at all times. He wants to talk to you. He wants to listen to you. My God, my God. Say, I'm a son of God. You got to say it, ladies. I'm a son of God. That's what it is. The two times that God said, this is my son. The two times he said that, he followed it with, in whom I am well pleased. Who told you God wasn't pleased with you? That's going to preach for a while, isn't it? Well, my wife just preached that not too long ago. Who told you God wasn't pleased with you? Adam, who told you you were naked? Who told you to hide? Who told you to be afraid? Huh? Who, who told you that God wasn't pleased with you? It wasn't God. It wasn't a preacher. It wasn't a called purpose person of God. It was the devil or his dominions. Oh, my goodness. Just kick him out of your life. You're, God says in you, I'm well, well, well pleased. You got to know who you are. God is happy with you. God, Jesus had done nothing when he got baptized. Nothing. He got baptized and walked, and when he came out of the water, God said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When you got baptized, you were nothing but a sinner, a lost individual, and you got baptized in Jesus' name, wash those things away, and if you haven't done that yet, you should probably do it tonight. And when he came out of the waters, when you come out of the water, Jesus said, that's my son in whom I'm well pleased. And it doesn't change. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. It doesn't change. My goodness, sonship does not end. Tell your neighbor it doesn't end. 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 God loves you where you're at right now. He's well pleased. And I feel kickback on some of that right now. Preacher, he cannot be well pleased with me. You don't know what I've done. You don't know where I've been. Yeah, you're right. I, you don't, I don't know what you've done. I don't know where you are right now. But I know one thing, you're a tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled, apostolic, baptized in Jesus' name, covered with the blood of Jesus, carrying the name, transformed, Holy Ghost, apostolic young person, and nothing else matters. That's your identity. He's well pleased because you're a son of God. Y'all sit, y'all sit down. My son. I got two sons, and they're nothing alike. Zero alike. And uh, I'm trying to choose my words. Probably should have my wife go for this. And I love both of them. <laughs> and they're not alike at all. One really likes what I like, and the other one doesn't like what I like. They. He, uh, well, he's the opposite of me, bro. It's crazy. 
Everyone's like, he looks just like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's about it. You don't act like me at all. It's different. There's nothing wrong with that. He's just different. But Brother Craig, they're my kids no matter what they do. They stay my sons no matter what decision they make. Even if they drive their car right through my living room and park it in the living room and get out and get a drink out of the fridge and go to their bed. They're still my sons. I pray that if one of them does it, it's going to be Malachi. But I pray that doesn't happen. Son, what's in the living room? Oh, my car. I just parked it there. He's just, he's just, he's just. He's just Malachi. He's just, he's so chill. He's super phlegmatic. That's what you're telling him. No, don't tell him. Hallelujah. They're different, but I love both of them and nothing changes. No matter what, they're still my sons. Here's the deal. You're a lot different than the people in this room. You're a lot different than me. You're a lot different than your dad, but you're still called you're still loved of God. You're not expected to be like somebody else. God has a purpose for you the way you are. Sin got to go, sure, but you don't have to change. You don't have to get up and try to preach uh, like uh, somebody else. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Just be you because that's who God loves. And if you make a mistake, he's going to pick you up and say, son, I still love you. Just don't park the car in the living room. You don't have to be like someone else for God to be pleased with you. I really feel like God told me to say that today. I really do. God, does, you don't have to be like someone else for God to be pleased with you. Don't look at others. Compare yourself to the Word of God. Let's see your Bible. Compare yourself to the Word of God. Don't compare yourself to someone else. You're never going to stack up to this. Yeah, that's true. But it's a, it's a, it's a process. I'm perfecting myself in holiness perfecting with an ing meaning it's a constant process until bless god i get raptured out of here <sighs> don't compare yourself to someone else hey if you're goofy praise god i'm glad you're goofy you know what i'm saying you want to touch everything in the room go ahead touch everything it doesn't matter it's okay god still loves you and so so do we right so do we right help me help me hallelujah you got to have a mindset that says, I am a child of God, that God is well pleased with me, that, that I am a treasure hid in a field that God sought fit to sell everything, to die for, just to buy it. And if you got the mindset that's oppos opposite of any of that, it's a mistake. <sighs> then we're not speaking the word of God. We're speaking the lies of the enemy. So step one, you got to know who you are. Step two, you got to know who your enemy is. If we don't know who we are, how are we going to recognize the enemy? You know what I'm saying? Because his voice sounds a whole lot like yours, and he uses the same way you do. You think, you think well, I'm, I'm going to go uh, to this location. The devil talks just like that. Uh, I'm going to go to this location. He doesn't say, hey, you should do this. He says, I'm going to do this. He talks to you the same way you talk to yourself. What's that called? Please help me. First person. First person point of view you got to understand you're a child of the king. And the enemy, here's what you, here's what you got to understand. The enemy is a roaring liar. Someone say liar. A roaring liar. Not a roaring lion. He wants to be a roaring lion, but he's not. He's a roaring liar. Tell your neighbor he's a liar. He's mighty, and he's trying to go around and roar. roar. But really, he's nothing but a roaring liar. And when he speaks, it's a lie. He's the father of a lie. And if he's telling you something, know it's a lie and that the opposite is true. He has no authority over you as a child of God. You have promises in your life, and he has no authority over you. Zero. You've got to get this mindset. If I can help anybody in anything tonight, I'm really just trying to press mindsets into your mind. He has no authority over you. He has no authority over this church. He has no authority over this youth group. He has no authority in your house, and he has no authority in your mind. You've been promised. You've been promised, as Brother Joel said, to have power to tread on serpents and on scorpions. What's the power of a snake? It's the venom in its mouth. That means you got power over the voice of the enemy. What's, this, what's, this, what's the scorpion have? He's got a stinger. What time is it? 
Praise God. He's got a stinger. What does that mean? You have power over the sting of sin. You have power over temptations in your life. In fact, Jesus said, you have, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Somebody say all. Either Jesus is right or he's wrong, and I'm guaranteeing 100% he's correct all the time. And he said, you have all power. So when, uh, when you know who you are and you start recognizing the voice of the enemy and the lies of the enemy, then you begin to hear and know who God's voice is. You've got to understand that the devil's trying to take your authority over him. He's speaking to you to steal that authority over you and his, over him and his life. Here's what, here's what it says in Daniel 11:32. But the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The enemy wants to believe a lie about you, uh, that, that, that you are nothing, you're nobody, wants you to believe that God is this or that or the other, and how God feels about you is, is not love and he's not happy. That way he can steal that, that truth and make you weak and get you to do nothing. Oh, my goodness. He wants to steal your power and purpose, but you've got to stand up and say, devil, I've come to destroy the works of the devil just like my father did. He came and walked on the earth to destroy the works of the devil, and that's what my purpose is too. I've come to seek and save that which is lost. You best believe everywhere I go with the sole of my foot, I'm bringing the name of Jesus, and I'm going to testify. I'm going to pray for people. I'm going to bring people in the house of God. I'm going to teach people Bible studies. I'm going to pray and fast and seek. And I'm expecting to have revival in this place. Because when God speaks, things happen. Things happen. Things happen. We've got to cut off the thinking and the lies of the devil tonight. I don't know what lies he's been telling you. Maybe he's been telling you're worthless, you're nobody, you're nothing, you can't make it, you're not going to have victory. Maybe he's been telling you that no one loves you in the house of God. Maybe he's been telling you that God's not real. Maybe he's telling you that you can never go back. You're never going to get back to where you were. Maybe he's telling you that, that it's, all hope is lost and you might as well return to the vomit that you left just like a dog. But I'm telling you right now, all those are lies from the enemy because here's the deal you are going to make it you are going to make it you are victorious you are well able you are going to win Ooh, my goodness my goodness my goodness my goodness my goodness you know we got to get to a place where we can hear the voice of god we got to get to a place where we can hear the voice of god and so tonight i really feel like tonight god's going to give you a word from you ever been there? I want to see your hand. You got a word from God at an altar call sometime. Man, there's nothing like it. I got, I've gotten words from God that just transform my situation. I remember when I was, I was dealing with pride for like a year and a half, and it was eating me from the inside. And when worship was happening, I just felt this, this push on my chest. And literally, I, I, at the time, I didn't know what it was, but later I realized... Well, later, Pastor helped me and said, that, that is God resisting the pride at worship services. And I remember the day I finally humbled myself and the day I said, I'm going to seek the face of God and recognize that I'm nobody and that I'm nothing. And I remember I was, I was in the shower. I was in the shower, and the devil had been lying to me, bro. He'd been telling me, you ain't going to make it. I ain't going to make it. That's how he talks. I ain't going to make it. I might as well give up. I might as well quit. I might as well throw in the towel. I might as well quit trying. And I remember I even told him, uh, another man of God, I turned to him one service, and I said, I don't think I'm going to make it. And that individual started to, started to cry, uh, cry and said, I've been praying for you. I can, I've been praying for you. And it had been beating me up every time I went to sleep, every time I woke up. You ain't going to make it. I remember I was in the shower paying absolutely no attention to anything. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like in the shower, like, it's like, it's like my most relaxed time. Anybody like showers? I take three to four a day. When I'm on vacation, I take like seven a day. Hallelujah. My water bill is big. It's a fact, bro. In fact, when I get cabins to go on vacation, the first thing I look at is the shower, bro. What kind of shower can I put my hands out and not touch? Thank you. 
They got water that falls from the top, falls from the side, shoots up from the floor. They got all they got lights that blink and bro. Woo! Could preach about showers for a while. Hallelujah. So, anyways. Man, I was in that shower, I was discouraged, I was beat up, and I heard that still, small voice which comes over the back of my head for me. I don't know how he talks to you. Come over the back of my head, and I'm in the middle of that shower, t- paying no attention to anything, and I hear, you are going to make it. And that was it. And I even turned around, like, what in the world? Woo! When you get a word from God, let me tell you, Brother Nathan, it changes the whole circumstance and the whole situation. All the condemnation, all the destruction, all the quitting, all the darkness, all the wanting to quit, all the devils in your life. Just got to go right outside the door. I remember when we were stagnant in this place, I remember thinking, God, what's going on? What are we going to do? And I was in the middle of an altar service, and all the youth were laying hands on me, and I had my hands and my face up in the air, totally humbled, totally seeking the face of God. And I remember hearing God say, you will run 100 on Fridays. When God speaks, it's sure. It changes everything. I remember dancing across that place till I fell on my face. You all go have revival in that youth group. We are going to run over 100 in this place. And if you're sitting down right now, you don't believe it. What's wrong? We are going to run 100 with people that have drug addict parents. Maybe they've been addicted to porn. Maybe they're stuck in their situation. Maybe they're cutting themselves. Maybe they feel hopeless. Maybe they're surrounded by darkness. But bless God, they're going to come in here, and you're going to pray for them. And you're going to pray for them. And you're going to pray for them because you got a purpose. Somebody shout to Jesus right now. Jesus, send them here. We'll love them, Jesus. You got a purpose. Tell your neighbor you got a purpose. You're going to get a word. You're going to get a word from God tonight. And when he speaks it, when he speaks it to you, you got to repeat it. You got to say it out loud. You can't just internalize it. You gotta say, I am gonna make it. I am gonna make it. You gotta verbalize it. Because the devil ain't hearing what God's saying in your mind. But as soon as you speak it, I am going to make it. He knows that presence of God has just given you a word. And it is hopeless for him to even contend you. You've just cut off every lie of the devil. And then you just tell him to his face, I am going to make it. We are going to run 100. You got to repeat it. You got to believe it. You got to confess it. You got to hold it close and say, God, I don't care if we start running 40 next week. I know you're going to bring in the 100 because you spoke it. I don't care if it gets harder and darker, God. I know I'm going to make it because you spoke it. Hallelujah. One word from God. One word from God. It's going to change your whole circumstance and situation tonight. It's going to change everything in your life. It's going to transform and change you. Your situation might be hopeless and full of darkness, but it's about to turn around right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It might be quiet. That voice, it's probably going to be real short and sweet, but after it speaks, it's like an explosion of words. You know what I'm talking about? I'm describing when God speaks to you. It's so short and small and still and quiet, but it's just unfolding. And it's remarkable how you can't even, you can't even fathom it all. You put it all in words. And when you try to tell someone else about it, you're like, oh, I can't even explain it because it's supernatural. But you know it and you hold on to it. And you walk in it, and God's going to do it. God's going to do it. It's going to be the opposite of the bombardment of the lies of the enemy speaking into your mind. You've got to learn the voice of God. You've got to learn it. You've got to learn it. How will I know it's a voice from God? It's going to build you up. It's going to be truth. It's going to be edifying. It's going to be in line with your authority and what preaching's been saying, in line with the Word of God. Turn off the lights. It's going to be with peace. It's going to lead you to overcome. It's going to carry through. It's going to come out of nowhere. 
When God speaks to me, it comes over me like the back of my head and washes into the front of my brain. Poof! And it's just there. It comes out of nowhere. It's quiet. It's still. It's sure. And it's always strong. And it brings a, a definite feeling with it. I don't know how God's going to talk to you, but he's going to speak to you how he does to you. And you've got to learn it. You've got to learn your voice. You've got to learn the devil's voice. And you've got to learn God's voice. And if you're hungry tonight, if you're hungry for a word from God, he is going to speak it into your spirit. But you've got to get undistracted. You've got to get humble. You've got to get on your face. You've got to get to an altar. You've got to seek for it. You've got to cry out for it. You've probably got to cry tears. You've probably got to repent. You've probably got to expect. But God is going to give you a word that's going to transform your situation tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you got to know who you are. You're called of God. You've got a purpose. You're a child of God. You've got to know who your enemy is. He's a liar, and he's been sowing seeds into you. And tonight, you've got to rip some of those seeds out, and you got to know the voice of God. Because it transforms your life. I'm glad you're here tonight. God's going to speak to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you need. Press on up closer tonight. I don't know what you're needing tonight. I don't know what the enemy's been lying to you about. I don't know the discouragement. I don't know the depression. You can lay on your face. You don't have to get up. I don't know what it is, but I know one thing. It's a lie, and God's going to reverse it and correct it tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Raise your hands and start praying right now. Come on, youth group. Maybe you don't need a word from God. Praise God. I'm glad you're doing great. Pray that someone else in this place would get a word from God. The Bible says that God dwells in thick darkness. The dark situation you're in does not mean God's not there. He's about to move on your behalf right now. Hallelujah! Jesus set free. Jesus deliver. Jesus! Come on, the lie tries to put you in captivity. But the truth, the truth, the truth makes you free. Maybe you don't know your purpose. God's going to give you your purpose in this place tonight. Maybe you don't know your calling. God's going to give you your calling in this place tonight. But you're going to have to seek. You're going to have to get hungry. You're going to have to reach. You're going to have to pray. God, i got a circumstance in my life, and I need you to give me a word on how to recover out of it. Come on, lift up a voice of desperation in the house right now. Let desperation get inside you. Let humility get down inside you. 
Let sincerity get down in this place right now. God is calling and transforming situations right now.
Cash God was over that booth. Um, whoever's in charge of serving food, if you want to go ahead and, <clears throat> and head out right now, get ahead of the crowd. I don't know who's in charge of serving food. Maybe you know who you are. <coughs> and then um, anybody that's ready to go to the gym, hang out, eat. are able to go right, right behind those people. And then anybody wants to stay and pray. Uh, you're more than welcome to stay and pray. But don't don't feel any pressure to stay. <clears throat> if you want to go across the street, eat, play basketball, four square, whatever else you're going to do. Feel free to go. It's, it's not a worry. It's not a problem. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Turn those lights on, baby. They're all nice lights. God bless you. Let's turn them all down. Thank you. Hallelujah. God's not done yet. That tongue was for sure. Because I went to the mic and just said, and God told me, wait. And then the tongue came forth. I feel like God's going to give people in this room mighty sensitivity to the voice of God. You may not notice it, you may not feel it, but God, I feel like God's going to put it on you to have an increased sensitivity to the voice of God. So go ahead and pray. If you feel the interpretation for the tongue, don't be afraid to stand up and say it with everything you got. We can go ahead and pray now if you want to. 